pain, that medically elusive evil. What about changing the focus from controlling pain to understanding pain as more than a symptom? Can pain be cheated? My name is Dr. Dean, chiropractor and physiotherapist. My goal is to reframe how medicine understands pain to improve care. This podcast series is dedicated to a same-day conservative treatment for low back pain. This podcast has a companion published article number 30. Welcome to the Pain is Not the Only Problem podcast. Article 30, Pain is Not the Only Problem, Report of Findings. These articles intend to reevaluate the prevailing clinical practices thought to manage low back pain, submit and debate novel low back pain contributors and mechanisms, meet patient expectations and satisfaction and clinically meaningful results, recommend a conservative non-surgical course of care to override pain instantly, and restore ADLs and patient confidence on the first visit at low cost. In brief, The Report of Findings, also known as the ROF, communicates diagnostic discovery and the recommended treatment plan to the patient. The Report of Findings is a verbal conversation that explains the characterization of the diagnosis and the treatment indications recommended by the clinician. The Report of Findings should be stylized to meet patient expectations and values. The report of finding is an effective way to discuss the diagnosis in simple terms with the patient and the scope of treatment recommended by the clinician. The report of findings is a proposal that the patient can accept or decline. The report of findings has four parts. Part 1, Diagnostic Discovery. Part 2, Treatment Indication. Part 3, The Treatment Plan. And 4, The Patient's Plan. Part 1 is Diagnostic Discovery. Part 1 of the Report of Findings explains the what, where, why, how of the diagnosis and explains how patient behaviors, lifestyle, biases, and values may have contributed to the diagnosis and occurrence. The Report of Findings includes a brief discussion of the clinician's careful deliberation and selection of the diagnoses. This should take about 3 to 5 minutes. These diagnoses should address all of the symptoms, the ADL insufficiencies, the employment-related problems, the inability to do sports, hobbies, and daily enjoyment, the emotionality, whether organic or experiential, and personal values and expectations of the patient. Part 1 should include an explanation for unlikely or rejected working diagnoses and include relevant differential diagnoses. The discussion of the diagnosis is intended to put the patient at ease, not to scare them. The clinician's discussion should use plain language, again in simple terms, and the patient should be allowed to ask questions. The delivery of the diagnosis should include all diagnoses from the problem list. Diagnosis is not prognosis. Part 2 is the treatment indication. Part 2 of the Report of Findings explains the clinician's recommended treatments and how the treatments intend to provide comfort, healing, return to usual lifestyle, re-engagement in sports, hobbies, and leisure, and reassurance to the patient. The treatment plan is incomplete if it only addresses patient comfort or only low back pain. Part 2 explains the clinical reasoning for the treatment plan and explains the likely outcomes if there's no treatment. Part 2 explains how the treatment plan will work, who will be administering it, where it will be administered, and how long it will take, and how long the effects are expected to last, and of course the estimated cost, this cost being as low as possible. Part 2 explains the risks and benefits of the treatment plan and the ideal conditions of the treatment plan, including patient participation, the most important part, and what will be done if the plan is unsuccessful or if the patient chooses to stop treatment. In some cases, the patient may stop treatment because they don't understand their treatment plan. Part 2 should provide treatment options that are also available to the patient that are not within the scope of in-office care of this particular clinician. 
Treatment options should also include conservative and non-invasive options. Treatment options should meet specific patient values, and treatment options should be offered that are sensitive to specific patient economics and social constraints. Part three is the treatment plan, and part three should never occur without part one and part two being discussed and where the patient agrees to continue to consider the treatment plans offered in part two. Part three explains the timeline, the interventions, and the therapies. Part three is an attempt to orient the patient within the vision of the treatment plan. It is an attempt to simulate the various facets of the treatment plan so that the patient can essentially test drive the treatment plan. Part three explains the accessibility of the treatment plan to the patient to ensure compliance. Part three is a Socratic platform for questions and answers between patient and doctor. The doctor is able to reassure the patient and the patient is given time to consider the recommendation, but is under no pressure to make a hasty decision today. Chronic, non-traumatic, non-specific low back pain is never an emergency situation. Part four is the patient's plan. Essentially, part four describes the responsibilities of the patient to ready themselves for the treatment plan, to assume the responsibilities of the treatment plan, to be accountable for their participation, including accessibility and costs, monitor their progress and report improvements or setbacks to the managing clinician. Part four represents at least 90% of the success of the treatment plan, endorsing heuristics. Part four includes patient education by steering the patient towards different modalities of information, written, verbal, visual, and possibly tactile, where the patient can observe and learn in their own way or to the best of their ability using a variety of platforms that are made accessible to them. Under no case should the patient rely only on the doctor or only on physical therapy instruction and have no responsibility whatsoever for the progress of their treatment. The treatment plan is designed to, at a minimum, reinstate usual lifestyle through recommendations, education, and access to various types of care. The treatment plan can be designed to meet specific patient expectations and values. For example, the treatment plan can address underlying contributors that will not only offer restoration to usual lifestyle, but will improve the chance of recurrence through patient education. Further, the treatment plan can make recommendations to elevate the patient to an even higher experience of living, evolving above and beyond usual lifestyle. A treatment plan is much more than a single prescription. It describes an entire plan for the entire patient. The responsibility of the clinician is to address the entire patient, not simply a complaint of low back pain. When the clinician simply prescribes drugs and surgical referral, the patient is denied access to complete explanation of their health care status and to many offerings of a successful treatment plan from a variety of providers from a variety of disciplines from which the patient can choose the one that seems to suit their values the best. The failure to provide a report of findings is an example that pain is not the only problem. Thank you for joining me today. Let's advocate for improved patient satisfaction and for the profession. Let's demonstrate a cross-culture willingness to strengthen medicine. Thank you.